First off, I want to give a huge thanks to The Ridge for sponsoring this video. More on that later. So, I recently demonstrated a new bug in KSP that creates some ridiculously efficient wings. If you haven't seen my previous video on this, I recommend you check that out first as it will give you some more details on how the bug works. In short, by doing some node occlusion, you can get rid of most of the drag of a heat shield while keeping its lift, which in turn gives you a wing with a really high lift to drag ratio. This bug not only allows some ridiculously fast propellers, it also enables some insane low mass missions. To demonstrate this to you, I built this thing here. It has a mass of only 1.56 tons, and can go to EVE and back completely unrefueled and without staging. It doesn't look like much, but there's actually a lot going on in that fairing. I'll explain as we go along. The first trick is the propeller that's inside. Inside the fairing, we have two small propeller motors which are attached to a hinge. Initially, they are rotated so that the propeller blades are outside of the fairing, and thus aren't shielded from aerodynamics when the game loads in. However, once we get up to speed, we want to shield the blades so that they don't produce drag on the way to orbit. So here's the plan. We rotate the motors inside the fairing right at the start of the mission. Even though they are inside the fairing, the game hasn't updated the aero model yet, and so they still produce lift. We can then take off, and then get up to speed. Once we reach our top speed, all we have to do is then quick save and then quick load to update the aerodynamic model and shield the blades. To get up to speed, we're going to ascend vertically and then drop the craft into a dive. As the craft picks up speed, the heat shield generates more and more lift, which pulls us right out of the dive and shoots us upward. After stabilizing our ascent, the next phase of the mission is to get up to the highest velocity and altitude as possible. To do that, well, we're just going to have to wait for the minuscule thrust from the propeller to accelerate us. We can do this up until just over Mach 1, at which point the propeller blades no longer generate enough thrust to continue accelerating. To get the rest of the way up to orbital velocity, we have one ion engine tucked away in the fairing that we can light up. We don't need the propellers anymore, so we'll do that quick save quick load trick to hide them from drag. The ion-powered stage of this ascent is interesting. In order to make this as low mass as possible, I needed to minimize the mass of the electrical system. As a result, we only have one RTG to power this ion engine, and so our thrust is remarkably low. This is where our next trick comes in. Ion engines in KSP have a kinda hidden mechanic, and then you can run them at a higher thrust for a lower efficiency if you don't have enough electric charge to supply them. As you can see here, the one RTG is able to provide enough power for the ion engine to run at 0.8 kilonewtons of thrust, at about 55% of its effective ISP. While we are losing efficiency to this higher thrust mode, this is made up by the fact that we're losing a smaller fraction of our thrust to drag. Once we hit about Mach 1.3 though, our lift to drag ratio has increased enough and the balance shifts to favor the low thrust, high efficiency mode of the engine. So at this point, we'll drop the thrust down to what the RTG can provide, which is only 0.15 kilonewtons, or 8% of the ion engine's max thrust. If you thought ion engines were slow, this is an entirely new level of slow. This ascent is literally going to take hours. Let's speed this up. After two hours of four times time warp burning, we have finally reached orbit, and we have about 8.2 kilometers per second of delta V remaining. Now we're off to EVE. Due to the low thrust, we need to do a lot of periapsis kicks. Ah. 
Another consequence of the low thrust to weight ratio is that we can't eject directly into an even counter efficiently. So I'm doing a moon gravity assist to first eject us from the carbon system into a resonant orbit, which then takes us back to carbon where we can do another moon gravity assist to put us on course for EVE. Of course, timing this perfectly to get an even counter afterwards would be annoying, so I just aligned the orbits and did a few solar orbits to get the encounter. And there we are, we are now arriving at EVE. I think for the first time ever for me, this EVE error breaking went really well. The heat shield wing functions great as, well, a heat shield, and so we can slow down safely. We can't quite do this all in one pass though, so we're gonna do a bunch of error breaking passes to slow down. Trust me, it's really boring, I'll skip through this. The descent is also interesting. Thanks to the insane lift to drag ratio, we can easily control our descent rate, and even control our direction. Just look at that! We're doing S turns in the upper atmosphere, pulling 4 Gs in the process. I did this so I could target this nice crater lake near the equator. Landing this is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to run the props in reverse to slow down and then come in vertically. And there we are! Another happy landing. Let's get Jeb out to enjoy the view and... oh. <sighs> to be honest, I'm not entirely sure why this is happening. During my tests, I was able to exit the airlock just fine. I believe something strange is going on with the fairing here. If you deploy the fairing, we're able to get him out, but obviously we can't do that or else we lose all of the drag occlusion. Oh well, I guess Jeb is going to have to look longingly out at the surface from this cramped little airlock. While Jeb may be disappointed he can't get out and stretch his legs, we do need to move on with the mission. The EVE Ascent is going to be very similar to the Kerbin Ascent. We first take off vertically, drop into a dive, and then ascend to the highest speed and altitude the props can reach. Once that's done, we do the quick save trick again to stow the propellers and activate the ion engine. Again, we run the ion engine at high thrust, but at 55% ISP to overcome the drag. Since the gravity is higher on EVE, and therefore the drag is higher, we need to run this high thrust mode for longer. I found it was optimal to switch around Mach 2 here versus Mach 1.3 for Kerbin. At this point, one thing you may have noticed is that the craft is starting to oscillate a bit. If you compare this to earlier, you'll see that these oscillations are getting worse. Whatever the actual reason is, these oscillations are not good for us. We need to dampen them out somehow. Fortunately, there is a simple way to do this. When we reach a low point in the oscillation, we can start banking, which will redirect the high lift force and reduce our climb rate. By then controlling the banking angle, we can control the climb rate until we are flying straight without any oscillations. As you can see, this little trick worked great. After running around in a circle, the oscillations are gone and we can climb to orbit as planned. While this thing is getting up to orbit at its glacial pace, I'd like to mention that I'm using an earlier version of KSP to do this mission. I'm using 1.8.1 here instead of the latest version which is 1.10.1. The reason I'm doing this is because the DLC engine plates, which are used to occlude the heat shield nodes here, are much lighter in this older version of KSP. Here, the ones I'm using are only 2 kilograms, versus 120 kilograms in the latest version. This is obviously a big difference. Since KSP is out of beta, I think using earlier versions like this to get an advantage is still fair game, as long as you're clear with what you're claiming. What do you think about this? 
I'm interested to hear what you think. And there we have it, orbit at last. And we have 1700 meters per second left. That's plenty to return home. Sadly though, we have to do a bunch of periapsis kicks again. Again, I'll speed this up, it's, it took a very long time. Urban entry is gonna be the same as the Eve entry. Nothing really too exciting here, just some arrow passes. I'll quickly skip through this. And again, final approach is gonna be very similar to our Eve descent. We want to target the KSC, so we're gonna do a hard turn here to redirect our polar orbit to pass over the KSC. And with that graceful landing, the mission has come to a close. We have gone to EVE and back using a single stage craft that is lower mass than many other low mass missions. These heat shield wings are truly amazing. While they do trivialize a lot of the game, I still think it's interesting to explore what they can do. Thank you for watching, and a huge thanks to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. You know, the holidays are starting to come around, and I bet some of you are still looking for the perfect gift to give. If that describes you, consider giving the gift of a Ridge Wallet this Christmas. Everyone has an old wallet that they've used forever, and no one thinks to get themselves a new one. You could make the Ridge their new wallet. The Ridge Wallet is a lightweight, space-efficient alternative to the bulky wallets of the past. It has room for up to 12 cards plus cash, you have a selection of 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber, which I have here, and burnt titanium. It is made of durable materials that are guaranteed to last. The Ridge Team stands behind their product and offer a lifetime warranty. The Ridge Team is so confident that you'll like it in fact, they will let you try it for 45 days, and if you aren't satisfied, you can send it back for a full refund. So, still looking for the perfect gift? 40,000 five-star reviewers can't be wrong. Whether it's a gift or for yourself, you can't go wrong with something built right. If you're interested, get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash s75. That's ridge.com slash s75 and use the code s75. Link in the description. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.